now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. One of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series, I'm going to be dealing with two female predators, Sharon Kinney and Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Now, your Sharon Kinney, well, who was originally born Sharon Elizabeth Hall, is also known in Mexico as La Pistolera, an American murderer and prison escapee who was convicted for the murder of one man in Mexico and is suspected in the murders of two other people in the United States. Now, your Sharon Kinney, when she was Sharon Hall, was living in a place called Independence, and she wanted to go out here and live the high life. And your Sharon Kinney Hall was a woman in crisis because she had adopted feminist ideals as related to going out here and using people as tools to move herself from one station in life to the next. Now, your Sharon Kinney started out being a gold digger with a goal of going out here and being able to live the high life, and she thought that a 22-year-old man, James Kinney, who she met at a church function, would be able to go out here and allow her to live the high life that she's always dreamed of. And she thought that this man would be the one to take her away from the town of Independence, Missouri, and take her to a high-class lifestyle that she saw in many of the movies and television back in the 1950s and 1960s. And to get your James Kinney to go out here and marry her, what she did was write him a letter telling him that she was pregnant by him and used this emotional blackmail as a way to coerce your James Kinney into marrying her. Now, your James Kinney did go out here and marry your Sharon Kinney, and after he married Shannon Kinney and was starting to build a family with them, your Sharon Kinney wasn't satisfied with the life that James Kinney was giving her and was out here spending lavishly and expected James's salary to be able to allow her to be able to live this high life. However, it wasn't enough for her after they had their second child and your Sharon was regularly carrying on an extramarital affair with a friend from high school. Now, by 1960, your James Kinney was contemplating divorce because your gold digging Sharon Kinney was out here spending excessively and he also suspected that she was having an affair with another man. However, before your James Kinney could go out here and divorce your Sharon Kinney, he wound up losing his life to an alleged accident that where your Sharon Kinney alleges that he was shot by his two-year-old daughter who used to play with his guns. However, police thought that your um, Sharon Kinney might possibly be a suspect. Unfortunately, I believe that the officers there were a bunch of simps because they basically did not go out here and do the gunpowder test or go out here and do a thorough investigation. And your Sharon Kinney was allowed to go out here and slip through the cracks as the case was declared an accidental death and your Sharon Kinney was allowed to go out here and collect on his life insurance and then go on to the next uh, individual she wanted to monkey branch to because when it comes down to hypergamous women like your Sharon Kinney, what they do is look to use a man for resources and when that man has outlived his usefulness, what they do in these alleged cases is try to find an, a way to eliminate that man either by going out here and taking his life or sending a simp to go play cat and save him and then have that man eliminate that man so that they can go out here and monkey branch to another man who has the resources that they want. 
Now, after the death of James Kinney, or Sharon Kinney, went out here and participated in hypergamy, looking to monkey branch to another man, Walter T. Jones, who was married to Patricia Jones. And as they were out here having an affair, your Sharon Kinney was out here having an affair with this man, and the other woman, Patricia Jones, found out about it, and she was going to go out here and try to work things out as related to a divorce. However, your Patricia Jones was never able to go out here and discuss the matter because she was found dead the next day, and police began to believe that your Sharon Kinney was the suspect in that murder, and they arrested her and wound up going out here looking to prosecute her for this case. Unfortunately, we have a lot of gynocentric individuals in the criminal justice system who, again, allowed her to get a pass, and as a result of the prosecutors and, and the and individuals, they are not really going through the evidence. Your Sharon Kinney was allowed to get a pass as related to the trial, and she was allowed to be acquitted as related to the murder of Patricia Jones. But when I look at the facts, they possibly, as I see it, look like your Sharon Kinney had a motive for murder because this gold digger wanted to go out here and get access to this um, Patricia Jones's husband's resources. And the easy way for her to get access to your this man's resources was to eliminate the wife and then go out here and be able to get with the man who I believe she had a child with, but your Sharon Kinney, again, was a textbook gold digger who became a woman in crisis, and this woman in crisis was enabled by the American criminal justice system and was allowed to get away, possibly, with murder in the case of your Patricia Jones and your James Kinney. And she then, after three trials for the death of James Kinney, then decided to go to Mexico with another man who she monkey branched to, Francis Samuel Pugliese, and abandoned her children with James Kinney's father, and then went out here traveling under the guise of being Jeanette Pugliese, talking about how she had gone to Mexico to get married, not because I believe she loved this man, but I believe she was out here getting involved with this man because he provided perfect cover for her, and that perfect cover allowed her to be able to go to this new country where her name and reputation could go be clean and she could go out here and have a fresh start. Now, as your Sharon Kinney was going to Mexico to have this fresh start with your um, Francis Pugliese, she went out here and bought a pistol saying that she felt unsafe in a foreign country, but I believe what she was afraid of was th this man finding out the truth about all of the skeleton bones in her closet, and as she was out here running in this country in Mexico, because her money was running low or to get medicine she required, she encountered a man, Francisco Padres Ordonez, a, a Mexican-American born citizen, and accompanied him to the back of a hotel and where he was going to show her some photos, but then made sexual advances towards her, him, and then wound up, she said she wound up firing a gun to defend herself, but the whole thing was that this man wound up dying as a result of her getting involved with a man, even though this woman was married, she was out here, as I see it, looking to get involved with another man, looking for another guy to go out here and monkey branch to, because she was basically using men as tools to get from one station to the next, because your Sharon Kenny's money had run low, she had been basically looking to live a high life, but was using men as tools, and she wound up taking the life of this man, allegedly to protect herself, but I believe that she just basically got into it with a guy, and then what happened was this incident happened. And when she got there, she was arrested and charged with the assault with a deadly weapon, and she was eventually convicted for the shooting of Ordonez and sentenced to time in prison. 
Unfortunately, on December 7th, 1969, there was a blackout at the women's prison where your Sharon Kinney was, and your Sharon Kinney used this as an opportunity to escape from the prison, and she has never been seen since 1969, and her case is one of the longest cases of a fugitive being on the run, and this fugitive on the run became a woman in crisis because of the greed that she had, and because this gold digger was out here digging for gold, she wound up with nothing but coal, and she wound up with a miserable life because she wanted to go out here and live the high life, and but didn't want to work for it. She basically wanted to use people as tools, and this is what led to your Sharon Kinney becoming a woman in crisis. She wanted somebody to take her away from a Independence, Missouri, but sadly wound up in misery because of her greed. And because of her greed, she wound up with nothing at all except a life on the run that became nothing but misery. And she basically lived all of her life out, even if she's still alive at this point, as a sad, pathetic woman in crisis. Now, the second woman in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Now, your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus is a disgraced Los Angeles police detective who was convicted in March of 2012 for the February 1986 murder of John Rutten's wife, Sherry Rasmussen. Now, your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus allegedly participated in the murder of Sherry Rasmussen because she was angry about your John Rutten deciding to go out here and marry Sherry Rasmussen over her and because she was angry about being rejected by John Rutten she decided to take out her revenge on the Ras on the, on the Rutten family by going out here and murdering your Sherry Rasmussen, saying to your Sherry Rasmussen, who worked as a nurse one time, if I can't have John, then nobody else will. And the irony of those words is that your as your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus went out here and murdered your Sherry Rasmussen, she made sure that neither woman had your John Rutten, but she went on with her life, and sadly, your Sherry Rasmussen never got a chance to really enjoy her life because she wound up dying back in February of 1986 as a result of your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus going on a murderous rage where she wound up taking Sherry Rasmussen's life. Now, your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus was a rookie police officer back in 1986 and she used her skills as a police officer to be able to possibly cover up this murder. Now, I believe what happened is your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus went over to your Sherry Rasmussen's home that she lived with with John Rutten as she was injured from a back injury went from doing some aerobics and as your Sherry Rasmussen was staying home to recover from that back injury, your Stephanie Lazarus went into her home and then wound up assaulting your um, Sherry Rasmussen and then wound up shooting and killing her as after she beat her to as she was beating her to death. Because as your John Rutten came home, he found his wife beaten and shot inside of their home and and thought it was a robbery gone awry because your your Sherry Rasmussen's BMW was stolen. And they originally thought the suspects were two Latino men. However, the actual suspect was a white female who basically got away with this murder and rose up the ranks in the Los Angeles Police Department for 23 years and basically just lived, went on living her life. And again, this is par for the course with many females who become extremely jaded like your... Um, Stephanie Lazarus, and I talk about this in depth in my book, The Woman Crisis, about in the chapter Murder and the Woman Crisis, because one of the motives for murder 
is that many of these women, they get angry, they start to act impulsively on their feelings, and as they're acting impulsively, they, they participate in this crime, and then what they do is run away or try to find a way to cover it up to make their world smooth, and then as they're making their world smooth, they basically act like, excuse me, nothing ever happened, and this is basically what your Stephanie Eileen Lazarus did after murdering Sherry Rasmussen in her fit of rage. She basically went on with her life like nothing happened and acted like nothing ever happened as she was moving up the ranks in the Los Angeles Police Department, moving her way all the way up to detective. And people just sat there thinking, oh, it was an unsolved burglary until the case was reopened on the cold case squad and the cold case squad discovered female DNA on a bite mark on, on your um, Sherry Rasmussen's body. And when they went out here to go out here and do a DNA test, they found out that the DNA of the bite on your Sherry Rasmussen's body was Stephanie Eileen Lazarus's DNA, which basically was um, irrefutable evidence that she was the woman who went out here and murdered your Sherry Rasmussen. Now, as they were investigating the case, they then set up a operation to get your Sh Stephanie Eileen Lazarus arrested and they told her that they wanted her information on a case and then they wound up take, separating her from her gun and then wound up arresting her for the murder of Sherry Rasmussen back in 2012. And after arresting her for that murder, she then wound up going to trial and she wound up going to trial and getting convicted for the first degree murder of your Sherry Rasmussen and was convicted for that murder and then wound up being sentenced in May of 2012 to 27 years to life in prison. And this is what happens to many of these women who just do not know how to deal with their feelings and do not have good self-control and cannot move on. What happens is because of their bitterness, they wind up Make, destroying their entire life because as they try to bury the skeleton bones in order to make their smooth world, eventually people find out the truth. And as they find out the truth, this once decorated police officer who was a de worked her way up to detective wound up going out in disgrace because people found out the truth about her. But this is what happens to many women who wind up becoming women in crisis because those women, what they do is think that the things that they do in the dark will never come to light. And the irony is, is that while she prevented your Sherry Rasmussen from having a great life with John Rutten, she is now living a miserable life in prison away from John Rutten and now she's spending the rest of her days inside of a penitentiary with Bertha, Big Betty, and Michelle, and spending her days dealing with many of the inmates that she basically put in prison and hoping that they don't go out here and trade her for your Raymond Noodles, Kotex tampons, Little Debbie snack cakes, Raymond Noodles, packets of Crystal Light. She is now inside of the penitentiary worrying about whether she's going to catch a shank from one of the inmates she put inside of that penitentiary. And sadly, this is the final fate to happen to a woman who thought that she could get away with murdering another woman because she was with the man that she wanted, not understanding that her behavior put her on the road to being a woman in crisis. And that behavior basically led to her winding up in prison because while she tried to bury the skeleton bones, they soon came back up. And as those skeleton bones came back up, they wound up becoming the, the prison that led her to her going from a police officer to being somebody who was working to keep the peace, 
to someone who would have no peace inside of a penitentiary, but this is par for the course with your women who wind up becoming women in crisis because many of these women who become women in crisis, they, they become so obsessed with what they want that they wind up with absolutely nothing at all. Now, if you want to learn more about what makes many women become dysfunctional to the point where they become like women in crisis, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and even Walmart.com. And if you want to see me do more women, do more videos in the Women in Crisis series, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App. And if I find that story, one that shows a woman in crisis, I will make that video and present it as another woman in the historical Women in Crisis series. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available for the first time in paperback, why 70% of black women are single. Learn all the reasons why so many black women can't find a husband and why 70% of black women are single. Get your copy of why 70% of black women are single on Amazon.com today.